Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you've never been here before, hey, I'm Shannon, and this is The New Demure, and I'm a vlogger, and I do fashion videos, and I do Christian videos, and I do beauty, and lifestyle, and mom videos, and pretty much anything that I just feel like I need to do, so go check out some of my other videos if you haven't been here before, and if you have, welcome back. This is a bonus video for the week. I was thinking about how I really miss doing two videos a week. And I was trying to think about what I can do differently and like I know a bunch of YouTubers have like a series, they'll like start a series on their channel and it won't be every week, it won't be every day, like it'll just be kind of random and sporadic. And I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what, the one thing that I'm very passionate about is being a Christian and a lot of times I go through things in my own life and it kind of tests my walk with God and so I decided that I'm going to do a new series called God Talk and we are going to just sit down and they're going to be on Sundays. The only day I will upload them is Sundays. I just feel like that's a good day to upload a video about God because you know it's not going to be in place of my other videos. My other videos are still going to be my weekly videos. This will just be um, a new series on Sunday. So if you guys ever want to talk about something in per Simba. If there's ever anything that you guys want to, that you want me to touch on specifically, then let me know in the comments or um, hit me up on Twitter and we will talk about those things. Today I wanted to start off this series with the first episode and it is going to be about being a Christian and being married to a non-Christian. In my case, that is exactly what it is. I am a Christian and my husband is not. Now, um, he isn't an atheist or anything. Like, he believes in God and he just isn't really where I'm at, you know? Um, he doesn't go to church with us. He does, you know, for the... He's, he's like a C and E Christian, you know, Christmas and Easter, he'll show up. His thing is what he told me when we first got together. My husband background is, he is Mexican and a lot of Mexican culture is being Catholic and so which is very close to being Christian and I asked him before about it and he told me that he is Catholic because his dad is Catholic and when I asked him about that I was like so did you guys go to like the Catholic Church all the time he's like no I've never really been I'm like oh okay so in his mind it was kind of like well if my dad's Mexican, I'm Mexican. If my dad's Catholic, I'm Catholic. Like, it was like an inherited kind of thing. And it's really hard for me to explain to him that that's not how it works. You know, it works on what you believe and it works on what you, how you practice and um, different things like that. I have been married for, five years will be in April next year. We will be married for five years. And we've been together for almost seven. When I met my husband, I should have been going after, it was more so that I was searching to be with someone. I wasn't looking for a Christian man. Like, as a Christian, you grow so much. Like, every single day you learn something new. And like, last year I was 10 times stupider than I am now when it comes to the things of God and the Bible. Now that being said, if you're not married and if you're single, then try to pray for a Christian mate, whether you're a guy or a girl, you know, pray for a Christian wife or a Christian, you know, husband, pray for somebody that's going to come along and that's already going to kind of be in your bubble and understand your beliefs and understand what you, your values and your morals are because it is harder when you do not have someone who is a Christian and you do marry them. Now, this by no means means that if you are married to a non-Christian, to divorce them and go find one. That's not what you're supposed to do. That is wrong. So stop that right now. Don't even th don't think about that because I am not saying that that is okay. You have duties as a Christian when you are married to a non-Christian. So your your love walk has to be so much more intense because let me just tell you what your husband is going to push every single button that you have and you cannot 
hold that against him. I have learned a lot being married. I mean, being married is, it is nothing like being just in a relationship, like by any means. It's so much more commitment. Like you can't just leave and just be like, hey, we're done, I'm breaking up with you, like bye. It's just so much more. I mean, you start a foundation with this person and you're with them for the long haul. So it's in your best interest and their best interest to get closer to God. I actually have been working on my husband for, you know, a few years trying to get him to come to church. Every single person is different. Every single person is going to come in their own time. It's different when you have friends who are non-Christians and you're a Christian and sometimes it's a little harder to get those people in, but you don't want to push them because they're they're going to stray. Now, when you're married, it is so different because that is the person who it, it it's all of these things are going to combine together to whether or not you as a couple prosper, um, get pregnant or ha get blessings or bless other people or um, find your calling together. Some people are pastors together and they're a husband and wife. Some people, um, the husband is in business and the wife is in say fashion and but that is their calling together and they help each other out in that way and they grow together in that way because you are a unit. Once you get married, you are one. You are not two separate people anymore. You're not two separate souls. You're, you're combined into one and that is what I believe because of the Bible. Now, a lot of women have a problem with submitting to their husbands and a lot more women who are Christians and have a non-Christian husband it is way harder. I raise my hand right now to let you know that I definitely have experienced that too. There are some times where I'm just like, no, 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 no. But at the same time, you have to understand what God is talking about. And when God tells you to submit to your husband, then you have to listen to those things. Now, those don't always mean like, if your husband's not a Christian, there might be some crazy things that he wants to do or places he wants to go or things he wants to see or whatever and you can't always listen to those things you do have to be the light if you are the only one in your relationship who is a Christian and who knows God and knows God's word and does read your Bible you're gonna have to pray for him you're gonna have to help him because he's not going to really know where he's at. Same with hus same with husbands. So if, if any guys are watching these videos and your wife is not a Christian, it's, it's the same thing. You're, you're going to have to pray for her and you're going to have to subtly be kind about getting her into God's plan for her. And it, it is definitely going to help your relationship. But in the meantime, it's going to be so stressful just trying to get them there. So I pulled up a few verses. Okay, so we're going to do Ephesians 5, 22 through 26. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For husband is the head of the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. If you are a Christian woman and there are certain things that maybe you don't always agree with, with your husband, and say he says, well, I don't want you going out after church to go to lunch or whatever. You can go to church, but I don't want you to go out with anybody, blah, blah, whatever. And even though inside that's something so simple, something that doesn't even matter, it's just going to lunch. If that is like turning inside of you and it's like really pulling on your strings and like hurting you like don't argue with him just say okay you know you don't want me to go maybe next time but you you have to understand that he is he is supposed to be the head of the household a lot of women hate that because they're all for this whole women power girl power women go first thing whatever i i don't have a problem with that now i have had problems sometimes with my husband as in every relationship you argue, you have disagreements, you butt heads, but as long as you're learning from what you're doing and you, you can start over every single day, every single day is a new day to be kinder to him, be more gentle, be less pushy, be more submissive. And I'm, I'm not, I don't mean submissive in a really weird way. I just mean if he asks you, hey, I don't want you to go on lunch this week because of money or I don't want you hanging out with this person. I don't like how they affect you, blah, blah, whatever. 
certain things everybody has like a different scenario then you are to submit to him now if he's telling you you're not going to church anymore because i don't think that that's okay you're gonna maybe not have to listen to that one because you know that god is the answer and that there is only one way and it's him and you're gonna have to once you step out of church and you step out of reading your bible then it's not going to be good for you or your husband it's going to take you both into a direction that you don't want to go in okay so for the other verse that i wanted to pull up first corinthians 7 14 for the believing wife brings holiness to her marriage and the believing husband brings holiness to his marriage if you just stop because your wife or your husband tells you they don't want you being in church anymore they don't want you praying anymore if you do stop you're not going to have that holiness in your marriage anymore you're not going to have that bond and that closeness that god wants you to have and your callings and your blessings and and everything that you guys are trying to do as a couple as, as a unit it's it might not happen because you're you are bringing the holiness in there so even if you don't have a believing husband or a believing wife you're responsible for bringing that light into your spouse and bringing them into God's little line of work and, and his love and showing them that the kinder you are and the way that you act with your spouse is going to bring that holiness into your household into your marriage into your relationship and your friendship with your spouse and you have to make sure you stay with that the next verse is 1 Corinthians 7 16 so skip one verse down don't you wives realize that your husbands might be saved because of you? And don't you husbands realize that your wives might be saved because of you? There is a way to get them saved. And if you're saved and they're not, and they have no clue what any of this is for, you have to work on them because you could be the only person who prays for them. And you could be the only person who gets them saved because you are so close and you have such a huge influence over your spouse. And you have to realize that a lot of the times it's it's a touchier subject to talk to a friend or a relative but when it's your spouse you have a lot more influence and authority with them and you have kind of like a way in to their heart and i think that if if no one else is praying for them and you're the only one like you don't you don't know you never know if you're the only one praying for them if someone else is but what if you are the only one who is praying for them and you're the only one who is believing for them and the only one in their life even trying to get them closer to God so don't give up on that and be kind about it and just try to work on them and try to get them to see that okay this is why I'm a Christian this is why we should follow God this is why Jesus is just so cool you know you have to be the one to show them that because maybe there isn't anybody else showing them anywhere so you have to be that light so the third thing, um, other than those Bible verses, I actually wanted to show you guys this book. I actually went to um, Rama. what was it, camp meeting? Yeah, last year? Yeah, it was last July, I think, last June or July. Anyway, so Rama is this big church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we are a part of Rama. our church is a part of Rama, but we aren't Rama because we're in St. Louis. So we go down there every once in a while. My family and I go down there every once in a while. My mom and I and my grandma and my son went down this past year and they have you know this huge bookstore with tons of books and i knew that i really wanted to find something really really good and helpful to help me with my husband and i found this book and i'm not even finished with it because i keep rereading stuff over and over again i'm like just now halfway through the book which is crazy to me because it's just one book and i can't even finish it yet because i keep going back and then going back and then going back and then going forward and then oh I need to go back a few more pages and read that again it is by Elizabeth George and it's called 15 verses to pray for your husband I'm pretty sure I think her husband wrote one for like praying for your wives I think but I'm not 100% sure if I can find that one I'll link that one below but I will link this down below if I can find it also I think you can probably get it on Amazon but this book is just so awesome there is a verse for each chapter. I'm literally only on chapter nine. So, which is funny because I've been reading it for a while. I'll just go through with you each of the, little, the chapters and everything that you're going to be praying for. So it takes out one chapter and different ways to pray for your husband and how to pray for your husband and your family because prayer is so important. Like I cannot stress that enough how important prayer is. 
and so many people take that for granted and really don't think it's kind of like oh you're just talking to the man in the sky well yeah because he is up there but I really fully believe 100% that prayer works and honest to God <laughs> I will say that when I first started reading this book within a few days I noticed a little bit of a difference and I'm not talking like a 180 with my husband I'm talking about like something so tiny you know the little things that all of us girls always look for I noticed those things happening because I was praying the correct way I was praying with the right verses behind the prayer and I was saying the right words as I was praying um, these are the 15 things you're gonna be praying for so one praying for your husband's spiritual growth praying for your marriage praying for your husband as a father, praying for your husband's wisdom, praying for your husband's job, praying for your husband's view of money, praying for your husband as he makes decisions, praying for your husband's health, praying for your husband's use of time, praying for your husband's purity, praying for your husband's speech, praying for your husband's husband to act with courage, praying for your husband's walk with God, praying for your husband to be a leader, and praying for your husband to be a team player. So every chapter, has this little section right here and like this one says my prayer for my husband's Colossians 1 9 through 11 and it has the actual prayer and it has the blank spaces right here up on the page and then you just kind of like insert your husband's name or your wife's name you can pray out loud pray it you know inside of you however you feel like you need to pray there's a bunch of different ones all throughout the chapters and it'll have the prayer verse and then it tells you why, why you're praying for this, why you're praying for his health, why you're praying for his wisdom, why are you praying for, for money and good decisions and all of these things because the fact that your husband is supposed to be the head of the household, he is going to need these things. He's going to need the wisdom. He's going to need the courage and to be able to speak what he's supposed to speak and say the right things at the right time. So this book is seriously 100% I think you should get this book. I'm not sponsored or anything for this. I just really, really believe that this book is amazing. Obviously, only, you know, Bible's number one. But this book right here, if you need to pray for your husband, get some wisdom, you know, on yourself and an understanding of why things happen the way they do or how you should act with them, I definitely recommend getting this book. It's amazing. That is all for today. I really hope that this video helped you guys out a little bit and maybe kind of showed you some insight into us kind of backing our husbands up and, and, and being with a non-believer because sometimes it is really hard to be with someone who does not believe in the same things that you believe in and doesn't value the same things that you value or doesn't value them as much as you do. Sometimes it's just a little hard, but with God, all things are possible. So as long as you're praying for him, and or her if you're praying for your spouse and you're doing the things that you're supposed to be doing and you are bringing light and holiness into your marriage then things will fall into place eventually because you're planting those little seeds and after you plant seeds they grow make sure you guys come back next time for another god talk and make sure you give this a thumbs up this will totally help me out go follow me on social media and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already any other videos that i have that are any christianity videos i will link them in the playlist Go check them all out. Go check out all my other videos too. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Lots of love. Mwah.